let's create a C Sharp console application that works with something called variables. A variable is simply a location in memory where you can store information. And each one of those variables needs to have a name, which we use as a reference of how to find that area in memory, and a data type. In other words, what are you trying to store in there? Now think of a variable as maybe, maybe being like uh, a pocket on your pants. We have different types of pockets on our pants, like Levi's, and usually we store different things in each of those pockets. And the pockets are different sizes. They have different functionality usually. For instance, if you had your car keys, I doubt you'd put your car keys in your back pocket. You might put a car key in the front pocket so you don't keep sitting down on your car keys. Or maybe you have a couple of coins. You might put, put it in that little tiny pocket on the right-hand side of a pair of Levi's. Maybe you put it in there. Your, your uh, comb, I don't think you'd stick it in that little tiny pocket in the front because then it would stick out and you'd probably look sort of silly. And so there's different pockets to store different things, and they're different sizes. Well, the computer works the same way when it creates a variable. It says, what type of variable do you want? In other words, what are you going to put in it, and what do you want to call it so that you can get to it later on? Maybe you're going to call it left pocket, or left front, or right front, or back left, or back right. And then that name is going to be used to go and find it in the memory and access it. Now, a variable is simply used to hold on to something, just like a pocket is. You don't have to put anything in it, but the pocket is still there if you declare it. So let's create a brand new solution, a new project, new project. And we want to make sure we do a console app.net framework. And let's give it a name of variables are fun. Call it whatever you want. Click OK and make sure also you have Visual C Sharp selected here. .NET Framework. OK. It's going to create a brand new solution for us. Variables are fun. Notice it just names the class called Program. I showed in a previous uh, video that you could change that. If you do change it here, it doesn't change the file over here. You can leave it that and it works just fine. I could come over here, right mouse click on Program.cs and let's do rename and let's call this variables call it anything you want press enter but notice it now prompts you and says do you want to go ahead and name all the references yeah change the references and that time by renaming this first it will change the class name the previous video when I changed it here didn't change the .cs file, which stands for C-sharp. That's your C-sharp source code. You had to go and manually do that. So one way to make the change is you right mouse click on that CS file, and you choose Rename, and that will change the names of your source code. Once again, here's main. Main says, where do I start? I want to go ahead, and I want to create a variable, and I want to store a value to it. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what type of value do you want to store? I want to store um, somebody's test grade. And then I want to store a homework grade. We'll call them averages. And then I want to store a project average. And then a final exam average. And then I want to calculate the final grade and display it to the screen. So what type of numbers would those be? Well, usually test numbers are between 0 and 100. Sometimes they go a little bit more. And so you then have to ask yourself, well, how big of a variable do I need to store that value? And if you look in your book on chapter, in chapter 6 on page 32, there's a data type called byte. And it allows you to store a number from 0 to 255. And it only takes up one byte of memory, B-Y-T-E, one byte of memory from all of the RAM you have. And that's one thing about variables. When we make variables, we like to choose what data type we need and be really careful about that because otherwise we could be wasting memory that I could be using for other things. For instance, I could type in the word long and say that long is going to represent the test average. But the problem with long is it now uses 
8 bytes of memory. And a test average is only going to be 0 to 100, maybe let's say 110 if they're lucky and they do a whole bunch of extra credit. So instead of using long and wasting 8 bytes of memory, I could just say the word byte test average. And I could be a good programmer and actually initialize that if I wanted to. Now you don't have to, but it's, sometimes it's wise to do. It slows the computer down a little bit, but it's still wise to initialize. So now we say we have a variable called test average that's going to hold a byte information, one byte of information, which is a number from 0 to 255. And I went ahead and assigned it. I could create another one, byte. Let's call it um, midterm. Well, let's see. Let's call it homework app. And we'll go ahead and initialize it to zero. And another one, byte. Final exam. And byte. Project av. So now I've created four variables each of a type of byte, so I've used four bytes of memory, and they can now hold data. Now the green underline, that's Visual Studio just telling you, hey, you declared a variable, you never used it. Do you really want to use that variable? And we're going to use it just a little bit later. So I've created the variables, and now I'm going to go and assign values. So let's say test av, so it now goes out to memory, finds that variable based upon its name, and let's say that you did awesome and you got a 90%. And then let's say the homework app, you just killed that and you got 100%. The final exam, notice you have to make sure it matches exactly case-wise, meaning uppercase, lowercase. You got an 80% there. For instance, if I said capital project app equals, we'll say 85%, I haven't it actually changed it on me, but go back to capital P and see if it works. There we go. And it says, hey, project av doesn't exist, and that's because it doesn't match case-wise, lowercase, uppercase. C-sharp is case-sensitive. So I make that match exactly. Now that they all have values, I've said go out to that pocket in your pair of Levi pants on your Dell computer and put values in each of the pocket. Let's go store 90 into that variable, 100 into that variable, 80 into that variable, 85 into that variable. In fact, I wonder what would happen if I tried to store that value in the variable. And it says, you can't do that. That number can't be a byte because a byte is only 0 to 255. So the system's trying to help you from making mistakes. It says, I'm going to try to help you and tell you, you can't put a comb in that tiny little front pocket. You'll look, you'll look like a dork. So don't do that. So in other words, we say, well, let's put it in the right pocket. Now that we have all those in the right pocket, what I can do is I'm going to create a brand new variable. And this is going to be a floating point variable. In other words, it's going to have decimals associated with it. And so I could have done a float, a double, or a decimal. And... You'll see on page 35 in your book what they represent. But usually when we have uh, a number that has decimals associated with it, we'll probably use the double variable. And you might realize that you have double, decimal, and float. So what's the difference? Well, they use different amounts of memory. A float only uses 4 bytes of memory. A double uses 8 bytes of memory. And a decimal uses 16 bytes of memory. So what that actually means is, the decimal will be able to have more decimal places because it uses more memory. It can go all the way out to like 28, 29 digits of decimals. A double goes 15 to 16 digits, and a float only goes 7. So when do you use which? Well, if you're doing a financial application, definitely use a decimal. Every little precision counts, including you can avoid rounding errors. Otherwise, you're probably just going to use a double. We use that for all real values. Real, R-E-A-L, means decimal or floating points or numbers that have digits off to the right of the period. And the float, they usually use it when they do graphical stuff. So we really want to use double in this case because it's not a financial. 
and it's not a graphic. So we'll say double and we'll call it um, final average. And this time we're going to initialize it with a 0, 0.0. That's a brand new variable. Now what I can do is say final av is equal to parentheses test av times 20% plus I'm going to continue mine to the next line and I'm going to copy and paste because it's faster homework average multiplied by 15% and the final exam multiplied by 30 percent and the project average multiplied by 35 percent and let's see if that equals a hundred percent which I hope it does and then we make sure we close off this calculation with a semicolon. And what it does then is it says go take the test average, multiply it by 20 and add it to the homework average multiplied by 15 percent plus the final exam multiplied by 30 percent plus the project average multiplied by 35 percent. Add them all up together and then store them, that's what the equal sign says, store them back to the variable called final average. And now what we could do is we could say let's go print out which will be our console dot right line parentheses double quote your final average is and I'm gonna add a little space there and then I'm gonna put in a plus sign and type in the word final average semicolon so that statement now says Go take the string, your final average is, I put a space so the data is not jammed right next to it, and then the variable final av. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. Let's see if it takes these numbers, weights the average, adds them all up, stores them to the final average, and then if it prints it out. Let's see what happens. So I'll click start. Remember I'm doing a decimal and it has a big long number. And it might just run the screen. Oh, I forgot to do something, didn't I? Watch the screen, it probably flashed at you and disappeared, which it did. That's because I didn't tell the system you need to wait. Console dot read line parenthesis parenthesis. Let's wait for them to press a key. You need to get in the habit of doing that. Your average is 86.75. Nice, that worked out really well. Okay, I can press a key, ends it, come back to our program. One last thing I would do if I were you. Since you're doing a formula, I would come right here and do slash slash, and I put a comment. This formula calculates the final grade. The other thing you might want to do, which you would in the real world or in my class, is come up here and probably say slash asterisk, and you can do a whole bunch if you want. You don't have to. Author. Greg Anderson, description, calculate a final grade, and close off that statement. Now, once again, you really only need one. I could do this. You need a slash asterisk and an asterisk slash. But can you see I can make it more readable if I sort of box it a little bit? That jumps out more as being the comment. So this comment is a type of comment you should put in every program. Who's the author? What's the description? You could even put date you wrote it or anything else. And then this is a comment that does the formula. You could even put comments that describe each variable. Uh, we could say something like test average holds the average score for test. But you know what? That variable is pretty descriptive. I like that. So maybe you don't need that. Okay? That's how you create a variable by knowing what type of data you're going to put into it, what's the name of the variable, and then you have to choose the data type. This is how you assign a value to a variable. You simply use the equal statement. And this is how you can do an equation 
and assign the result of that equation back to another variable. And then this allows you to print off the value of that variable. This is called concatenation, the plus sign. That says take a value and attach it to something else. So it says take this string and attach that value using the plus sign to that string. In fact, while I'm concatenating things, maybe I wanted to go ahead and come back over here and I could concatenate double quote percent sign double quote. So now it's going to print out your final average is space, the final average, and now a percent sign. Let's run it one more time and see if it can adds that all together. And there it is. That's how you create variables. Specify the data type, give it a variable name, assign values to it, do calculations, and print the variable out.